Hashtag a for me. Hashtag a for me. I'm pin. Long one, you a for me. Le. A for me. A for me. Le. A for me. Lugu bangi. I for me. A for me. Le. A for me. Le. A for me. Lugu bangi. I for me. Le. How can you sin to Baba? I can't slow man. Go see a man. Hey man. Go see a man. In child, I can't sin to man. Oh, boom, do what you say. Oh, can I say I can't sin to go see a man? In the last year, I'm here as a Makaya. In the last year, I'm a Pukugi. Oh, Pukugi, I'm not going to see a man sin to me. Niashazana, Mbushazuna bangan bako. But I'm getting shy. I'm getting the man go see a. Afumi lugu bangi kuka 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 Afumi le Afumi le Afumi lugu bangi Uta Afumi le Ah Afumi le Afumi lusu kichima kuna tu kibela maash kadi tina skibeli dog Jana makelo ana Afumi la masulu Hey. Again, it is that. Utale ngatut sponga masulu ah sponga masulu ayas tume layas tume lumtetele sponga masulu sita sponga sponga masulu lagu fumela umte ayamasulu ah amasulu. Ayos to me, afumile, ah, afumile, afumile, ubangi, fumile, afumile, ah, afumile, afumile, masu, ala fume na unyaga sego, afumile, 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 ubangi. Haibo, haibo, haibo. Ale wanza jo. Oso, 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 oso. Nagasa. Au shona pas. Shona, shona pas. Oso pesu. Afumile. I'm <laughs> Afumila, sebani la matagat, afuma masu. Komba pesu, komba suli. Glory to God. Chal makela nuti hashtag afumi la masul. Mau puma la ufiga upa nuti hashtag standing in the gap. Hashtag afumi la masul. Manga be kolum dom ofunum kwa tsa be supalu kuti nishogo. I bow in cause. Turn with me your Bibles to one of my favorite scriptures. Mark chapter eleven. Hallelujah. Are you born, God? What are you doing? Hi. Hey, come now, de, come now, de, go. Lagi te calvary. Amba. 
Phone to chapter 11. What can mark chapter 11? Ung Fundele. Nakula Minang Bonabat, Alamabeshma, Laba Fundela, and I'm asking your Fundela, and ask Fundela. Got to Anjan, I'm not told about Fundela, and I'm a boos and Fundela. Bishop Mutulan Shumala, and I told Ban Fundai, Nam Matabang Fundel. Turn with me, your Bible, the book of Mark, chapter 11, reading from verse 11. Let me read. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked, when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the even tide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. We he was hungry. We nag. And he was hungry. Verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, it happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. See, there's another translation, Malfunda, and Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Just wa kulman eslatasomkwan. And he said, give me some figs. And then it says that, and the fig tree answered and said, I'm out of season. I didn't write this, this book. He spoke to the fig tree and he said, give me some fruit. And the fig tree answered and said, I have no fruit. I am out of season. I don't know what is the annoyance of Jesus. Is he annoyed because the fig tree says that I have no fruit? Or is he annoyed, or is he, or is he annoyed because he knows it is not season for the figs? But he also, he also is deceived by the false promise that comes from the fig tree. Because the fig tree is, is green and is in full leaf. So the fig tree is saying, I can provide. But when he comes closer and says to the fig tree, give me some figs. The fig tree says, I'm out of season, I have no figs. I don't know what is the annoyance of Jesus. Is it because the fig tree is green? It's in full leaf. It promises that it can deliver. But it has no capacity to deliver. But Jesus is wondering, why are you green if you are out of season? Because the conversation of Jesus and the fig tree should have gone like this. When Jesus says, give me some figs, the fig tree could have, could have simply said, you can have them. Because the fig tree should have known uh, who is speaking to it. Because the one that was speaking to the fig tree is not limited by seasons. So, 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 so the fig tree would have simply said, ah, enjoy yourself. The fig tree should not have looked at the condition. But could have received the word from the one who is the giver of life. He sent the word to the fig tree, give me some figs. The fig tree answered, I am out of season. And Jesus says to the fig tree, ah, okay, okay. He answers the fig tree now. He says, okay, may no one eat fruit from you from now and forevermore. So in other words, he says, it's better you die because you have denied me the source of life. I am the one that created you. I am the one that gave you life. I am the one that knows your seasons. All you had to do was to say, with pleasure. There are things that God says to you. When God says to you, Son of man, can these bones live again? You say to him, 
Have you ever seen bones living, coming back to life? No. But the prophet says, the prophet Ezekiel says, you know all things. Because in your work with God, there are levels. There are levels like Peter when you know all the answers. You know Peter used to know all the answers. Until when Jesus told him, when, you see, you see, when Peter graduated, he actually, Jesus said, who, who do men say that I am? Jesus said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus said, ah, I know you, Peter. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. I know you. Because Jesus knows him. So I, you, I know you, Peter. Flesh and blood did not reveal this. But my father is in heaven. And Jesus says, upon this rock, the confession that I am the Christ, I will build my church, not on Peter. False doctrine, not on Peter. The church is not on Peter. Upon this rock, but the rock there is Petra, if you read very well. Petra, which means little stone. Upon, upon this rock, not the little stone, I will build my church. Upon the rock, the rock is Christ, the confession that I am the Christ. I will build my church on the confession that I am the Christ, not on the little stone. On the confession that I am the Christ, I will build my church on myself, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. But you, he says, you are Peter, which means you are a little stone. You are not Simon the unstable, the reed. But you are, you, are, you are moving from unstable to stable. You are Peter, a little stone, which means you are a little stone that has been cut from the rock. So you have your place in the rock. I will build my church and you will be in the church, in the rock. Because you have been cut from the rock. You are the little stone that completes the building. And you see, what he says, what he says, he says on, on this confession, I will build my church. And then he says, ah, immediately, immediately, you know the story, immediately, Jesus said, hey, the son of man must be glorified. He must die and suffer many things. He must be handed over in Jerusalem. Peter says, I, you, you can't die. You are not going. You won't die. No, no, no. You will not die. Jesus says, Satan, get behind me. <laughs> same man that's, that, that, that received deep revelation, same man in a moment turns from being the stone to a rock, I mean to, to, to a devil. He says, Satan, get behind me. Now watch this. Because Peter knew everything. But, but Jesus was bringing Peter slowly to the fullness of the measure of knowing Christ Jesus. Illuminating his eyes so that you'll be able to grasp how deep is the mystery of Christ and the church. So he was bringing him to knowledge. That's why, that's why you, you, you see, you see, before Jesus, Peter said, I will die where you die. All these they will deny you except me. Me, I will die where you die. Jesus said, You will deny me three times before the roster. Cross, you will have denied me three times. Jesus said, I, Peter says, Hey. You, 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 Peter, Peter says, me, I will never deny you. And it happened and he denied him. After that denial, because there are things that happen in your life that expose you to truth. Yes. Truth, you see, the greatest truth that you know, first of all, you need to understand who Christ is. When you know him, then you will know yourself. Yes. If you don't know him, you can't know yourself. Because your life is hidden in him, so it's better you know him. If you can know him, you will know yourself. Now he says, he says, he says to him, you, he says, when, when he comes back, when Peter comes back, Jesus speaks to him, he says, Lord, you know all things. That's where he was taking him. Lord, you know all things. Let me show you something. There's a time when you think, you, see, there's a time when I thought I knew everything. If someone is dead, I say, ah, because these people don't have faith, man, they die too quickly. There was a time when I thought I knew everything and I was on fire and I knew everything. Knew everything. After 20 years of preaching and doing the same thing over and over again, I realized that there are too many things I don't know. But the things I know are enough. When my truth level increases, my carnal level decreases. When my divine truth level increases, my carnal level decreases. And then I realize it's okay that there are things that I don't know. It's okay. It's not an embarrassment. There are things I don't know. It's okay. It makes life easy. That's I don't know. I, I don't know. You mean fixing cars? You, you know, when I started the chain, so people used to call me when their cars are broken down. And then I will come to fix the car. But I'm not a mechanic. But I use common sense. 
And one of my daughters in church once told me, I told her, use common sense. She said, common sense is not a subject in school. I'll never forget that. What is common to you is not common to all of us. A little girl in church like this, short like this. I said, oh, now you talk to me like that. Okay, we'll see. I'm telling you, use common sense. Let me, let me show you something in the word quickly. <coughs> and the Bible says, he spoke to the fig tree and said, may no one eat fruits from you. And, and he, went, he went on his way. Let me show you quickly. He, he continued to walk. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And he did his business. He never bothered about the word that he sent to the tree. Today I want to speak about something very close to my heart, something that changed my life. The power of confession. I discovered that when I speak the word, when I confess the word, I am creating my own atmosphere, an atmosphere for myself. The reason I work on the word and speak the word, like Jesus did, he said, may no one eat fruit from you. And watch this. He never went to investigate if it is happening. Like some of us pray for people. With one eye open, in the name of Jesus, be healed. When we see the person moving like this, we say in the mighty name of Jesus, receive your miracle. Because you see, if we don't see movement, Father, I thank you, your will be done. The mighty name. We want to see some movement. But this is what I learned over, 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 over the years as I studied the word. I want to teach this for the next 20 minutes and I'll be finished. Give me 20 minutes of your time. Let me show you this quickly. I learned that our society today, our people here, everybody has got power and everybody has the anointing. If, uh, probably about 50 people here can make us to fall under the power. Believe me. Very easy. Few, few people here can just release fire and we can fall under the power. I'm not talking of the pastors. I'm talking of all these people here that have come here who lay hands on people in train stations. And they release fire upon them. And they heal the sick. They walk into hospital wards. These people here, they do signs and wonders through the grace of God. But the problem is not the absence of the anointing. There is too much power. Because anointing you can fast for 40 days and 40 nights and receive power. That's that, that simple. 40 days, 40 nights you will receive power. But as ignorant as you begin to fast, you will be more ignorant after the fasting. But more anointed. Because knowledge will not jump out of the book and come to you. You are the one that must seek knowledge. The problem, the problem in the church is not the absence of power and anointing. Young boys in church are running around with too much power. They have power, in their, dis power at their disposal, power in their hands. They have power. But they do not have the manual. That's the problem. They don't want to read the manual. People want the long formula. They mess up the equipment before they go to the manual. I drive a Jeep Cherokee SRT. Now, now, now I was told by one of my friends that I know. He said to me, you know what, this car, something I didn't know, he said, you know this car has, you see, you see this, he showed me, it's written lodge. Some of you know it, it's written lodge. Now that is for racing. He said, you just press this button and put on lodge. The car will launch itself. The car will launch itself like, like crazy. It will just go like a bullet. But I didn't know because I didn't read the manual. I didn't know that I carry so much power in that car. I only depend on all, other, the, all, all the other sports things and I say, hey, this car is amazing. Until one day, I decided all by myself in the absence of my children and my wife, <laughs> all by myself at night, I was driving from Southland and I stopped along the way somewhere in Tlutlu and I said, it was flat like this. I said, let me exercise this thing. So I pressed the button. And the car just, it flew like crazy, like a pew. I said, ah, mighty Jesus. 
Lord, I give you, can I, can I go on a little bit and then I, I throw feather. Then I remember that there are some people here who are looking for people like me at this hour and they are called policemen. So I stopped, I returned it to normal. I, was, I just wanted to see what it can do. But before, the power was always there. The problem was that I never consulted the manual. The power is, people, people talk about everything. It's even, it's even, it's even, it's, it's even become nonsense in my ears. The next time I hear people talk about this one, eating grass, this one, what, all this thing, this thing. So that, that thing, you know, that thing is neither here nor there. Just people, people make nonsense become f famous. People make, people make stuff that shouldn't. These are boys just playing with power. And it's okay, you just leave them alone. You know, I, <laughs> no, I, I don't have time for these things. The kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. And we are busy with some petty stuff. Talking about petty stuff. The whole sermon is dedicated to someone who is drinking petrol, someone who is eating snake. You know, I, say, I said to myself, but the problem, I began to see what's the problem, what's the challenge? I say it's the absence of the manual. Do you know when people, do you know when people want to avoid using the manual, which is the Bible? Do you know what they do? They say that, no, God speaks to us direct. We don't need this book, it is outdated. The day you hear someone say this book is outdated, they no longer need this book. You must know that they are beginning a cult. Because if you want to create your own cult and keep your people stupid, you teach them lies for a long period of time. Consistently over time, teach them lies and teach them lies. And don't invite anyone to come and preach to them. Make sure that you are the only one teaching, you are the only one speaking. You are lying, you are lying, you are lying. Until they believe the lies to be the truth. Then the lies will then take the place of the truth. When they hear truth, they will say the truth is lies. And lies have become truth. That is the problem. Why are we here? Why are we in this conference standing in the gap? We have not come to try and cast out demons. There are generals here who can cast out demons by looking at your face. Here we have come to de-educate people so that we can re-educate them according to the system of the kingdom of God. So that the information that they've been feeding you from social media, from all the platforms of communication, from certain irresponsible preachers, the information they've been feeding you, which is not in line with the word of God, should be brought to line. Because the, Jesus says himself, Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall know make you free. That's why the Bible says the entrance of the word brings light and it gives understanding to the symbol. We need to come back to the manual. It's a simple gospel I'm preaching. The gospel is more powerful in its simplicity. We need to come back to the manual. The power is there. This is, this is the scripture that changed my life that I'm teaching today. The day I got to understand this word, this thing of being poor, lost my address forever. This thing called poverty doesn't know where I stay. Not because I was prayed for, but because my truth level increased. My truth level increased. There are demons that fear me not because I've been praying, but because of what I know. Ashandaya, Labrador. Because of what I know. It's because of what I know. Prayer is good. I pray, I fast, I seek the face of God. That is very good. But prayer without knowledge is futile exercise. Because the one that prays must pray the word. Hey, 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 I know I am teaching now. The one that prays must pray the word. 
Otherwise, you'll play like those old people that used to say, when what is in Tabel, so Katam was Kalaza Smetabo, Gungule, Betama Pigums in Jerusalem. Sunders, what Twala Mashon Baba and Twalis or no says. You waste your time, you think you are praying. All night, people say they are praying. What do I do? Oh, gosh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Bob. Mm. 24 hours. Mm. And someone comes and he prays. And he says, he takes this word, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shade of the Almighty, shall say of the Lord, Thou art my rock and my refuge, in whom I shall trust. And when he starts to say that, heaven starts to move. Because allow me to say this in passing. Allow me to say this in passing because it just came to my spirit. Everyone that has come here probably has come with a couple of angels, not one. The day when you get born again, there are angels assigned to you. Not for you to worship them, but they've come to minister to you. To minister to you as an heir of salvation, hey, pertaining to the promises that concern salvation. Because salvation is not alone, it's a full package. They have come to minister to you, hey, Shamo Sire, pertaining to the promises that concern salvation. What are those? It's simple. It's, it's simple. One of three, Psalm. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his own name. Forget none of his benefits. Eh? That's what it says. What are the benefits? Those are the benefits of salvation. He that forgives all your sins, he that heals all your diseases, he that redeems your life from the pit, he that crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He that renews thy youth like an eagle. See, it's a full package. Sanctification, justification, propitiation. It's a full package. So these angels are walking up and down. And you are busy praying. 